Um, all right, Kim, so let's start at the beginning. All right, well, to start off, you know, my very first memory is with my brother. And we were outside, and I was probably three, and I'm in my little pink fluffy dress, and he's got me flipping off the cops <laughs> as they go by. And as my mother says, the, the cop came around the block and came up and knocked on the door after Kurt and I ran in the house and uh, knocked on the door and said, uh, you know, your son is out in the yard having your poor little daughter <laughs> flipping the bird to the cops. <laughs> How old was Kurt? Well, if I was three, he was probably about six. <laughs> Yeah. That was like a thing because I've seen some of that in some of the. Oh, other he's always flipping. Yeah, he's always flipping the bird. I don't know where he got it. Um, what um, he used to do it. I guess my mom was saying that uh, even friends of hers would, when they were driving, and if a guy looked at my mom, he'd be in the back window, like glaring and flipping them off and <laughs> trying to get, you know, trying to like protect his mom, and uh, and then we. You know, as we grew up, I mean, it was always him. He called the UPS truck SWAT, you know, a SWAT truck, and, you know, he got into SWAT, and he was all into that. And then, you know, he'd yell out yell out at the cops, like, corn on the cops, corn on the cops, and thought that was hilarious. He, um, he early on picked up the, the cops sort of on his own, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean... We never had any problems with police, <laughs> and for some reason, I mean, even though he watched like Adam Twelve and you know watched all these police shows like SWAT and all that, um, you know, he just had like some already wanted to test authority. I guess is kind of how I saw it. Was there? Do you remember when the f two of you were living with um, Don and your mom? Was there a lot of tranquility in the house, or what was it like? You know, I was so young, I really don't remember a lot. I mean, I barely remember my dad being in the house. Um, I know that he did a lot of sports and all that, so he wasn't around in the house a lot. But really, my only images of my dad being there um, was him and his tidy whities wandering around the house. And the when we watched uh, uh, the first time The Wizard of Oz, and I was so scared of the flying monkeys, I was hiding behind my dad. And scared of the witch and all that, but I was like four, so you know it was never. I, I don't remember it. Like Kurt was so affected by the divorce, and I didn't really have any feelings towards it because I was, you know, I was five when my dad was finally moved out. So since you brought it up, how did you see him? How did he seem affected by the divorce? Um, he just seemed like. He didn't like the broken up family. He, he was very family oriented. He was very, you know, I mean, that's what we had all the time. And it was just, I guess it was just, you know, from what he has said is just, it was not common. It wasn't extremely common for divorce at that age, you know, in that time, at that exact time in our town. Um, and he didn't want to have a broken up family. And I guess, I don't know, I guess it embarrassed him or whatever. But, you know, I, I didn't, I, you know, for myself, it didn't do anything to me. Um, but for him, and then, you know, I mean, he wasn't happy about it, but then, you know, he, he was the one that asked to live with his dad. And that's also just kind of how it went when there was divorce. It was the son went with the dad, the daughter went with the mom. And, you know, and they had a good relationship. And they did get closer that first probably year that they were, you know, living together and stuff. Um, but, you know, then my dad remarried and brought in a whole new family and kind of, you know, kind of didn't want the old family to interfere with the new family. So, you know, I think Kurt was kind of pushed to the side and he got all the blame because he was the oldest for anything that went wrong with like the stepbrother and stepsister and, and all that. You've told me some, some of that stuff before, like what sort of stuff would happen? You know, I wouldn't know the exact specifics for that because um, I wasn't there. You know, I'm living with my mom, anything that happened there. Um, you know, I mean, he got grounded for an entire year because he forgot to feed the dog. And... When he was living with your My mom. dad. With my dad. Um, 
and wasn't allowed, you know, he's grounded from watching television. So the whole family would, after dinner, sit down and watch a, a show and Kurt would be sent to his room. And, you know, and they stuck to like the full year. And that was just, <laughs> it's like, usually it's like, yeah, you're grounded for a year. And, you know, it's like, yeah, a week later, it's like, whatever. But, you know, it, it was, you know, he was very hurt by that. And, you know, kind of get, got pushed to the side from, from my dad because my dad wanted, you know, kind of wanted, I think my dad just wanted to like start over because, you know, he wasn't happy when my mom divorced him. And, you know, he just, you know, kind of almost tried to use us kids as torture to my mom because my mom, you know, just adored us so, you know, I mean, she was our mom. She loved us so much and wanted the best for us and everything. And he knew that was the only way he could hurt her. It was to kind of hurt us. And, but I don't think it was extreme. I don't know if it was like totally intentional, but that's what it felt like. Did you, um, is that something you knew at the time or is that something Kurt told you later in life about being grounded for He would, no, he, I, I knew about it. I knew in the, at that time that, you know, cause he like, that was probably, I mean, I don't even know how old he was. He must have been like 12, you know, 12, 13 years old. Um, I don't know exactly how old he was, but right about that time is when him and I would like, you know, if the parents were fighting or, you know, there was turmoil going on or whatever, we would, you know, we kind of like snuck away to our room and like sat and talked. And, you know, just kind of like, we need to stick together. And, you know, no matter what the parents are fighting about, it's no big deal. It's, you know, it's their deal, it's not ours. And, you know, we bonded a little more because of that. Just like, okay, let's not be the fighting kids that we were. Because, I mean, he was a little shit as a kid, you know? He was the big brother that picked on the little sister. And, you know, I used to just, ugh, he used to just torment me sometimes, just, just to get a reaction. And my mom taught me like, if you don't react, he'll stop doing it. <laughs> and I just couldn't not react. And I always wanted to get him, you know, get him back tenfold. And uh, so when we were kids, it was, uh, you know, I'd be watching, I liked Mr. Rogers and he hated Mr. Rogers. And we had one of those, you know, old console televisions and I'd have to go over and take the knob off the, off the TV so that he couldn't change the channel. And, or I'd be, I'd get really focused. And so I'd focus on whatever I was watching on TV and he'd come over and like sit on my head and fart or, <laughs> you know, um, wrap me up in a, you know, knew I was claustrophobic. So he would, you know, grab my sleeping bag and wrap it around me. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, he would just do little, little, you know, big brother things, you know, we're only three years apart. So it was, it was pick on the little one and also, you know, I did my share of, you know, picking on him too. And he didn't like it. Like we got along really great in our early, early childhood because he was like so happy to have a sibling. And then as soon as I was able to like really get into his stuff and want to play with his toys. And, you know, of course I was younger and clumsier and I'd break something or whatever and he'd get really upset. And then, the then it all turned when we were teenagers. He would like for some reason want to go into my room and either, you know, take my, I was very OCD and like I had my Rubik's cube all perfect and he'd go in there and like mess it all up and, you know, little things. I don't know why he was obsessed with going into my room and taking my things or moving stuff around or whatever, but just to torment me, I guess. 